Okay, so this video is going to be on 2D kinematics, uh, which is uh, the second major topic in AP Physics C uh, mechanics. So it's really going to be an extension of uh, the 1D kinematics video that I did previously. Uh, and I'm going to start off with uh, the same sort of formats. I'm going to start off with the variables. So uh, in the old video, we had X, V, and A for position, velocity, and acceleration. Uh, in this video, we're going to have two-dimensional equivalence of those variables. So x, v, and a from the previous um, video are going to become r, uh, v will stay the same, and a will also stay the same. But the difference is that in 1D kinematics, um, velocity, acceleration, and position were uh, vectors, but the vector component was only indicated by the sign, so it could be plus or minus. In 2D kinematics, it's kind of more complicated because uh, now they are kind of true vectors and they have um, multiple components. So in 2D kinematics, they have two components. In 3D kinematics, they have three components. So the most important thing to do to start off with uh, is to put a vector sign on each of these. Uh, and in textbooks, you might see vector signs drawn like that or like this. Uh, there's many versions of them. Basically, you just need to indicate that it is a vector. So in 2D kinematics, each of these will have two components. So R will be uh, X and Y, so position X and Y in the Cartesian plane. Uh, velocity will be V sub X, V sub Y, and acceleration will be A sub X, A sub Y. So they'll, they'll be um, decomposed into each direction. Uh, for example, you would have an acceleration in the X direction and an acceleration in the Y direction, and both of those combined would give you the total acceleration of that particle. You might also see these vectors written with sharp brackets or as columns. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's all equivalent uh, in, in terms of formatting. So uh, the next uh, thing I'm going to do is uh, sort of do a brief introduction of how to manipulate, manipulate these vectors. Uh, there was a video on uh, Newtonian mechanics, the math for Newtonian mechanics. Um, but in case you haven't watched that, uh, I'll still do a, a brief introduction uh, to, to manipulating these vectors. So if you want to do addition, subtraction, um, multiplication with a scalar, etc. with the vector, uh, you have to do it term by term. So uh, to, to give you an example, um, let me just change this real quick. Okay, so to give you an example, uh, let's say I wanted to add uh, two position vectors. So let's say I wanted to add R1 plus R2. And let's say R1 is equal to X1, uh, Y1, and R2 equals X2, Y2. So the way I would add these is, uh, like I said, term by term. So I would add the X terms uh, and then the Y terms separately. So R1 plus R2 would be x1 plus x2 comma y1 plus y2 and you could do that for basically all vectors but you have to make sure that they're the same type of vectors so for example you can't add an acceleration and a velocity vector because that has no physical meaning uh, you can only add vectors of the same type so for example an acceleration plus another acceleration or a position plus another position uh, or velocity plus another velocity and subtracting is the same you just change the sign to a subtraction sign uh, and the same for y and that's it for subtraction. Uh, if you want to multiply or divide by a scalar, so that, that's also a pretty common operation that you have to do uh, for kinematics. For example, let's say you wanted to multiply a vector by time or by uh, any other scalar value. The way you do that is once again term by term. So let's say that I wanted to find uh, the, the displacement. So I wanted to find v times delta t then what I would do is, let's say I had this v, uh, velocity vector. So let's say I bring that down. So I have Vx, uh, Vy times delta t. Uh, and the way I, I do this multiplication is just um, I do it term by term. So I get uh, Vx times delta t uh, and then comma Vy times delta t. Uh, and so if you want to divide, it's the same thing. You would just divide each term by delta t. Uh, and, and that's how you can um, do some basic manipulations uh, on these vectors. Uh, 
Uh, things like dot products, cross products, all of that uh, is discussed in more detail in that video uh, on Newtonian mechanics. Uh, but but here's uh, the basic operations that we need for uh, 2D kinematics. So the next thing that I want to go through is the, the equations uh, that, that we use in 2D kinematics. So the equations themselves stay basically the same uh, from 1D kinematics, except you can apply them to each direction independently. So a nice fact about 2D kinematics is that uh, the x and y directions are independent, completely independent of each other when it comes to using kinematics equations. So you can use the same equations from 1D kinematics uh, and use them separately on each direction uh, and you don't need to worry about the other direction at all. So you can uh, solve the problem for x without having to worry about y and you can solve the problem for y without having to worry about x. Although sometimes you might need to solve for like time or something uh, from x and use that in your y or, or vice versa. But for the most part, they are separate um, from each other. So x and y are separate. And so that's nice because we don't need to learn any new equations. So you can use those same four equations. Uh, so for example, let's say you wanted to use that first, uh, that first equation that I went through. So x equals x uh, naught plus vt. Let's say I wanted to use this equation in 2D kinematics. So I would uh, apply this equation separately to x and y. So in the previous video, we only had this equation. But in 2D, we can have this exact same equation for y. So we can have y equals y naught plus vt. And t uh, it stays the same for both of them, but v can change. So v in the x equation will be v sub x, and y in the, uh, sorry, v in the y equation will be v sub y. And these are just those components uh, that I discussed in uh, when I showed you the vector for velocity. So you can use these two separate equations, and this is just one example. Uh, and you can solve this problem for x and for y, and then uh, you can combine the results to get to get your solution. Uh, so you can apply things like the uh, things like this to, for example, projectile motion. So let's say you had to kick a football, and you wanted to find out. Um, the trajectory of this football. You want to find out some parameters about its trajectory. You can apply, so let's say this was x and this was y. You can apply these two equations uh, or any of the other kinematics equations in each direction separately uh, in the x and y directions uh, and then you can solve the system uh, for those two uh, directions uh, separately. And so that's a convenient way uh, of doing problems in 2D kinematics. Uh, so one more thing that I want to go through in terms of equations uh, is in the previous video uh, I went through the concept of a norm for 1D uh, kinematics and for 1D kinematics a norm or a magnitude is very simple because you just take the absolute value uh, of the number because all the vectors are just single numbers. In 2D kinematics the norm is kind of more involved so uh, what, we do, what we do is we want to find the length uh, of a vector so the magnitude of the vector and in two dimensions, uh, the norm can be found using, Pythag using the Pythagorean theorem. So let's say you had a vector uh, v for velocity, let's say, uh, and then you had your uh, Cartesian uh, plane, so you had x and y, and you wanted to find the norm or the magnitude or the length of this vector. So what you do is you use the Pythagorean theorem. So this is gonna be v sub x, and this vertical component is going to be v sub y. And so if you want to find the length, uh, all you have to do is take the square root of v sub x square plus v sub y square. And for three dimensions, you do that for, for 3D. So you would add plus v sub z square, for example, if it was a 3D vector. And so that's how you find the norm uh, of a vector for, for kinematics purposes. So for example, if you wanted to find the speed, you would take the norm of the velocity in this manner. So speed, is equal to this thing, and that's also equal to the norm of the velocity. Uh, one more thing, distance uh, is not, so distance is not the norm of the displacement. So in 2D, let's say we had delta R. It's not equal to this. Uh, if you want to find the distance, you ha actually have to sum up each displacement uh, and take its norm independently and then sum it up. So uh, to, to write that down and make it clear, more clear, uh, it's a sum over i uh, of the norm of delta r uh, i. So basically if you had a bunch of displacements like this, 
and you wanted to find the, the distance that you cover, you have to find the norm of this one, uh, add that to the norm of this one, and then add that to the norm of this one, and then add that to the norm of this one. And you can't just find the overall uh, displacement and then take the norm. That's not going to work. You have to find the norm for each individual uh, displacement vector and then sum those norms together uh, in order to find the distance. So everything I did so far has been uh, bit, has been with Cartesian coordinates, so with x and y. Uh, but with 2D kinematics, you can also use polar coordinates. And so that's the next thing that I'm going to go through. Uh, polar coordinates are not really used as often as Cartesian coordinates uh, in AP physics problems, uh, but they are used um, sometimes, so it's, it's important to know them. Uh, and it's important to know how to manipulate them and also how to interconvert uh, between the Cartesian system and the polar system. So polar, uh, system, the polar system. So the first thing I want to do is uh, show how Cartesian uh, vectors or Cartesian coordinates map to polar coordinates. So something like x or y in the Cartesian plane maps to r theta in the polar plane or the polar system. And r and theta are, are parameters. So if I draw the uh, the Cartesian system would look like this, and the polar system also looks like this, but you don't use x and y. So let's say you want to find the coordinates of this point in polar in, in the polar system. What you would do is, first of all, you find the, the, the r value, so that's the distance to the, uh, to the origin. And then second of all, you find theta, which is measured from the positive x-axis. It's always measured from the positive x-axis. So you find theta and you find r, and that's how you can describe that point using polar coordinates. Now, you often want to interconvert from polar uh, coordinates to Cartesian coordinates because it's easier to do uh, calculus, it's easier to do algebra with Cartesian coordinates. So the way you can convert uh, between those two is, is quite simple. Uh, x is always equal to r cosine theta, and y is always equal to r sine theta. So using these two equations, you can find x and y if you're given r and theta. Uh, if you want to go the other way, you can find uh, r if you want. So you can find r by taking the distance to the origin, so x squared plus y squared and then the square root. Uh, and if you want to find theta, then theta, so r equals that, and theta equals uh, the arc tan or the inverse tan of y over x. Uh, and you want to make sure that, all, that your calculator is in degrees when you do these uh, computations because theta is generally measured in degrees uh, from the positive uh, x-axis. So that's how you find uh, x and y from r and theta or r and theta uh, from x and y. So the next thing that I want to go through uh, is, is uniform circular motion. So uniform circular motion is uh, not as much of a 2D kinematics topic. It's more of a rotational kinematics topic. Uh, but it's useful to go through it in 2D kinematics because it's a nice example of uh, using a polar system and also of uh, using different acceleration vectors uh, and finding the net acceleration on a particle. So uniform circular motion is basically when you have a particle moving at constant uh, speed in a circular path. So let's say you have a center and this particle is moving uh, in, the in the circular path at constant speed. Uh, so sometimes uniform circular motion is described using polar coordinates because uh, obviously it's natural to use polar coordinates in a circular uh, system like this. So particles uh, like these, you can describe them with uh, theta and r, uh, and they will have two components of their acceleration. So they will have uh, a tangential acceleration, and they will also have a radial acceleration, which is going to be inwards. So radial acceleration. So those two components will give you the net acceleration uh, vector of this particle. And it's important to, to keep in mind that for uniform circular motion, the tangential acceleration, so a tangential, is always equal to zero because we said that the speed is constant. Uh, and if you do have a tangential acceleration that's not zero, the speed would not be constant. So it has to be zero for uniform circular motion. The radial acceleration is not equal to zero uh, because the radial acceleration does not change the speed. So it, it doesn't have to be zero in order for you to have constant speed. Uh, and the radial acceleration is what keeps this particle in, in orbit. So it keeps it uh, in that circular path. 
And because of that, sometimes it's called the centripetal ac uh, acceleration. So centripetal acceleration. Uh, and the centripetal acceleration uh, is always going to be given in, in uniform circular motion. It will always be given by the formula uh, a radial or a centripetal equals v square over r, where v square is the speed square of the particle. So if you want to find the speed, you find uh, how fast it's moving, uh, just the magnitude, just, just the scalar number, and you square that and you divide by the radius of the path, and that's how you find the centripetal acceleration. So that's, uh, that's basically what I uh, want to cover for uniform circular motion in this lecture. Uh, and one final uh, point for, for 2D kinematics is uh, when you're dealing with, with velocity, position, acceleration, things like that, uh, you have to make sure, especially in 2D kinematics, that you remember that some things are vectors and some things are not vectors. And if you forget that, you can make big big uh, mistakes and sometimes get incorrect results. So for example, if someone tells you uh, that that a, one particle, so particle A, has a velocity uh, in, in this direction of magnitude five, okay, so let's say that the norm is five, and another particle B has a velocity in this direction uh, of magnitude, let's say, uh, five again, but it's in another direction. It's very, very important that you don't uh, assume that these two velocities are the same because since it's a vector, the direction does matter. So you don't want to make the mistake of, for example, subtracting these two velocities and getting zero for your answer. Uh, and that's that's one of the most common mistakes that you can make in 2D kinematics uh, that you don't really make in 1D kinematics because in 1D kinematics, vectors are just uh, based on the sign. So you're not really going to make that kind of a mistake. But in 2D kinematics, you have to be very, very careful that you treat vectors as vectors uh, and scalars as scalars, and you don't mix up the two. So that's basically it uh, for what I want to cover with this video. Thank you all for watching.